hazard, a situation that poses a level of threat to life, health, property, or the environment. Once a hazard becomes active, it can create an emergency situation. Waste, unwanted substances, or objects which are required to be disposed of by the provisions of national law. Hazardous waste is the waste that contains components or materials that are highly hazardous to the human body and the environment. Industrialization, human activities, is increasing, so the amount of hazardous waste is also increasing. The situation is bad. It is so bad that we need to actually quantitate that situation to see how many people are actually involved, how many people are exposed, what are the quantities that are being produced within. Most of the African countries have no idea how much of the waste is there. They have no idea what is the actual impact. They have no idea how many people are actually impacted. The world has agreed through the conventions that this is a problem that we need to deal with. And that is why institutions like the Africa Institute has been set up to capacitate, to assist the countries and to try to bring some easier ways, collective ways of dealing with, with this issue. is so dependent on fossil fuels. One of the fossil fuels is oil. We mine crude oil, produce a lot of other products. This oil gets old, it's used up, then it has to be changed, then we have what we call used oil out of it. Usage oil contains heavy metals like lead, cadmium, chromium, nickel, fully aromatic hydrocarbons, even PCBs. We've done a lot of tests on this, so you don't need any profit to tell you that it is hazardous. In most African countries, used oil is a problem because there is no system of actually collecting it in order to ensure that it will be handled in an environmentally sound manner. So to a very large extent, it is being dumped in the nearest ditch. If you spill oil, you can't grow anything there. You literally change the texture of the soil. If it gets into water, you can't consume that. This resource is going to run out. We need to protect, we need to reuse, we need to find ways of maintaining the one that we already have, especially when it is usable, when we can, it can actually be cleaned and be used for other, for other purposes. Used to well, if it's not properly managed, it gets into the environment, doesn't disintegrate, it simply pollutes. And the environmental impacts of that has been quite uh, devastating to our waters, to our uh, biodiversity, and even to the health of the people. So that is the problem. People use, use engine oil as herbicides. So they pour it on the ground to remove weeds and so on and so forth. You kill the bacteria that are existing there, so you can't utilize that soil for anything. You can't have grass growing there. It's even worse with water, because uh, if water is contaminated, then the communities would be in a very compromised position, because water is essential for life. That is why it needs to be controlled, because once it gets there, it actually kills uh, uh, living organisms. In the waters, it actually covers everything else so that oxygen does not come in. The health of the water body and the 
living things within the water can actually totally die. Most of the African countries are facing the problem of used oil being thrown all over the areas. Most of the marine pollution problems is based on land-based sources. So most of the user engine oil, people from car garage just throw them into the drain. They end up in the lagoon polluting the water. The informal aspect would be with the uh, mechanics that uh, would uh, repair vehicles, maybe not appropriate gar garages, but maybe backyard. The informal sector have a big, big challenge in that the awareness and um, the knowledge of, on the hazardous, hazardous nature of these waste streams is really not there. You'll find in markets that people are just notorious street which has, everybody is a mechanic. Basically they do the, the basic servicing of a vehicle and that involves removal of the, of the oil from the, from the engine and, and then replacing that oil with new oil. But the, the challenge becomes the management of that used oil that is removed from the cars. We can see evidence of used oil in the environment which has been spilled from, from the works that these gentlemen do to service the vehicles. You can see the environment is quite black. The environment in which they're doing this work is an open area where uh, there are pond, water ponds and therefore the challenge of underground water pollution is very high. Informally, people use it. People use it, they gather, they collect, and then they use it informally. That is a damage. Uh, the problem is mainly a system of collection. In this informal market, there are businesses that collect used and waste oil. Though the manner and conditions under which these small businesses operate do more harm than good when they do not adhere to government regulations. The entrepreneur tried to develop a storage facility for the use in the waste oil. There are a number of these kind of the storage facility in Dar es Salaam. What they are doing here exactly is that they are collecting the oil, waste oil, waste fuel from all other places in the, in the city. And then they store here, they try to make separation, the oil from the water. And then the, the used oil are going to be supplied to the company that they're dealing with the metal, steel industry, for the co-firing. I've got to hear from vessel, I mean ship, the Port Dar es Salaam, and the petrol stations and the other workshop around our place. This is the industrial, you know, so there are many industry here. There are challenges, hard to get uh, material. And then uh, when I then come to this place, we got the uh, flood. There are near the river. And another one, there are many, many companies like us. So they like to get the uh, material. These informal collection and storage facilities present a problem for many African countries. Because the entrepreneurs in this informal market lack knowledge and training, the oil is collected and stored improperly. This results in spillage at various points of the collection and storage process, and in so doing, the oil and water gets contaminated. You can see a lot of spillage around, which means that uh, is not handled properly. The oil itself, the used oil is hazardous because it contains heavy metals. If this is allowed to go through the groundwater, they're going to pollute it as well. So that's the main concern. And if we're allowed to be just burned all over the places, it could be very hazardous. So that's why they have to be controlled, stored properly, and then transported properly. There are a number of different situations where the collection of uh, used oil has actually been working. In most of the countries where they are led by the industry themselves. What I do, I collect waste oil from ships, factories, garages, and so on. 
there are factories in Dar es Salaam and upcountry, couple factories, which make reinforcement bars. They use the waste oil to uh, blow their, their uh, furnaces. Before that, the factories, reinforcement bar factories, they used to buy oil from uh, uh, oil companies, which is expensive. They've turned to using waste oil, which is from engines, car engines, lorry engines, and uh, from ships, waste oil from ships, which is much, much cheaper. In some cases where small businesses collect used oil, their proper protocol and regulations are not adhered to. So during this collection process, care is not taken and oil is spilled. The spillage is not only unsightly and hazardous to the environment and people, but the oil is also wasted. Spilling oil. You're not supposed to spill oil. And you can avoid spilling oil. There's no excuse whatsoever. The solution is punishment. There's no shortcut. It's punishment. If you go on doing this, we don't give you a permit. But there are instances like in Lesotho that show us that used oil can be collected and handled in the correct manner. The used oil, we get it from the vehicles that come in for service. And then we've got a process whereby a technician will put it in a can, and then from the can it will be pumped into a big reservoir. From that big reservoir, uh, oil coal, that is a South African company, will come and collect it for us to take it to Exxon Refinery in Johannesburg. Basically, uh, Toyota is a global company, and then uh, it teaches us about the environment, how important to care for our environment, because if we don't do it, then Toyota is going to penalize us. So we're trying to pass also the education to the local people here as well, to tell them that oil, used oil, if it's split anywhere, then it becomes dangerous for our lives and then for the species that are living around. So I, that's why we take it from there. Used oil has to be taken care of. We're trying to urge other companies, like uh, biggest big companies that are affiliated, are servicing with us, but sometimes they are service on the side. We're trying to collect that oil also from them. But the challenge still remains with individuals. If you service it at home, then we can't get rich of that, that oil. This oil is valuable. It's just that uh, we don't have refineries in Lesotho here. Exxon, which is the refinery company in South Africa, they give you something like 50 cents per liter. So there is value, and then I think if people get serious and then we start collecting, we can make something out of it. We need to undertake awareness raising programs so that the people involved in these kinds of activities can understand how the activities are impacting on the environment. We need to go back to the basics of just even helping them understand how to manage the used oil, why it is an issue and how we can protect the environment. Because most people from the research and the findings that he gave to us was that they use some of it, they mixed it with hair cream, used oil which shouldn't be because you can imagine the effect on, on human skin. That's why we are all conversing for awareness. And awareness costs money. It's very expensive. There is enough value in, in used oil. As long as people realized that, as long as people also know where to take it, as long as people know how much they can get out of it, then definitely they will start to take it. Even the people who are running the backyard mechanics would not lose it. They would actually collect it knowing that I'm going to get a rebate. Or even the people who are just passing by say, can I have, can I have that five liter of oil? They can actually get that oil and take it there. Just like the cans, as long as they know where to take them, they know how much to get, they're going to get out of it. It's a, it's a law of supply and demand. So if we get the, the demand potential for the product, this is where I think the, 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 the action can take place. How do we communicate with people at the grassroots level? How do we communicate, you know, some of these scientific and complex waste streams so that, you know, even people at the grassroots level can understand and then they become trainers of trainers. If we can carry out awareness, sustained awareness, we will be able to win this war. So because it can actually be used as a resource, we need to create 
a situation where collection can actually be incentivized. We, we, we are looking into economic instruments, which some countries are already using. In Mauritius, the recycling of used oil is a steady practice, and companies like Virgin Oil have turned products from used oil into commodities. Used oil is of a huge value as far as it is recycled. Nearly 200,000 liters approximately is produced as used oil in, on, on the island. Previously, pe people were using it for burning. They were taking it, cleaning it, and, and used for burning purpose, which creates a lot of pollution, and, and uh, we collect nearly 70% to 90% of it at our end, and we recycle it. We refine it and, and make base oil, light diesel oil. We get bitumen, and we get uh, uh, HFO. We collect uh, oils from all the service stations. We pay them six rupees a liter. Plus, we collect it from ports also. Those ships which are coming for debunkering, they have got a waste oil also. There, we are getting paid by the companies. And, and uh, for the services, we don't uh, uh, pay for the oil or anything there. There, we are getting paid for the service. If you compare recycled oil, put back to base oil and light diesel oil, Compared to the crude oil, which comes out and you use a lot of energy to, to get the same amount, is far more cheaper. Used oil refining is, from any ground, most economical, most viable, and that will generate huge of jobs, and, and it is to the benefit of every person. We are Bell Oil. We are in Zambia, Losaka. We recycle used oil. As you see here, the plant here, you don't have such thing in Zambia. No one recycle the oil from the beginning. The dream is we'd like to take all the oil and recycle it, sell it. It's very good for the environment and we'd like to have all the good used oil not to get burned, to get recycled. To encourage the people, bring your used oil here, we buy any quantity, anything. So this, this, this material has got market value has got economic value. He is paying the, the user to collect the user. So countries like Mauritius and Zambia are well equipped to deal with used oil. But what eventually happens is that oil ends up in the landfills. Whatever waste is being generated in South Africa, we have got um, options to deal with those waste streams at home. If you look at what happens to these waste oils when they arrive at our facilities, we apply a process that we call um, ash blending, where this uh, liquid will be co-blended with ash, with waste ash that also comes from our industries, and that, that will be mixed with an uh, excavator friendly load on our uh, landfill site, and ultimately that blended material will be placed in layers on our landfill site. Uh, we do receive used oil and then we treat it. Basically how we treat it is that we mix it with, we blend it with uh, fly ash. Why we treat it is that it, we neutralize it with a lime just to bring the pH down and then we landfill it on the hazardous cell that is also lined with, that is some lining underneath so that it doesn't uh, have any seepage. And then we also do monitoring, boreholes monitoring to, to make sure that there is no other con contamination and so on. I believe that used wells can be recycled. It can be a, so a source of energy again. Uh, but then the reason why is that it ends up at, at, at the landfill side is that sometimes these wells are contaminated. So mostly that we receive here is oil sludge that cannot be really be re recycled anymore. What is working well to me is that all the oils that we receive get treated. So with the uh, clients not disposing oil off, say for instance in the river beds and they have the initiative to bring it to site and then get treated and disposed of in a correct way, I think it's a, it's a, it's a big achievement to the, to the whole city and the whole nation that are doing a good job. 
Although knowledge about the value of used oil is largely uncommon, there are some companies and small business owners who have developed innovative ways to create useful products from used oil. We get the oil from our local suppliers here, within Lusaka. Instead of throwing it in the, in the environment, and it can be, you know, it's not a good idea. So we thought of using it in our, in our product, wood preservative. It preserves wood from getting rotten. We are creating a product that is usable in a friendly manner. We now know that used oil is not waste. We know that because it is now black, it is simply because of some materials and the carbon that has gone into it. That this oil can be cleaned and become new oil and be used for all other intents and purposes. Because at the end of the day, if we are, if we are taking this waste stream, this, we, are, we are finding solution to the waste stream, means it is not going causing an environmental impact. People should be made uh, aware of the uh, act that they are doing um, the, and the benefit of doing so. And there's no business as usual scenario that will work. We will need to devise a system where people are, I would say, eco-intelligent in their action. Any industry is particularly responsible for the well-being of society or human health in general. So we need people to be more responsible and look at how their activities in terms of profit making are having an impact on the environment in general. With extended producer responsibilities, the, the producer should have responsibility beyond and even to be able to collect it and help in recycling and help in getting rid of that particular waste. Pollution doesn't recognize boundaries. One man's bread is another man's poison. The intention is not to prohibit development, but the intention is to say to developers, you know, develop in a manner which is friendly to the environment. Zambia has developed a, a, a statutory instrument on extended producer responsibility, EPR. This is a good step for the country. It will now compel all producers of products, particularly the ones that are hazardous to environments, to be responsible for the lifespan of the product other than just manufacturing it. So we are using legislation as well as their goodwill so that as, as part of their corporate responsibility they see it as a way of helping the country clean up the environment and take out some of this waste which most of it is hazardous and protects the environment. This monster that we call waste, we should find maybe a good name for it. Don't call it waste. You know, take it, you know, look at it as a resource. I want to see an environment where everybody will be proud of because it looks clean, it is safe to live in. If I can say what my dream would be is that the hazardous waste that's being generated is all being dealt with in a responsible manner with the least impact on human and environment. Uh, I want to leave a better environment for my future generation, yeah, so that they can also come and enjoy the same fruits that we are currently enjoying here. Yeah. The difficulties are there, we must admit. The challenges are there, and even how to implement it can be very difficult. But we always believe in going and moving forward. Excitement for me is that Africa has the potential to be at par, to be as great as other continents, if Africa gets its act together. Our strength as a region is in working together and our strength is in realizing the potential that lies when we bring our minds together. So that we can make a clean and healthy Africa. Sharing the experiences, doing things in uniform. Together we can form a team and fight this monster called waste.